Good morning. It's foggy out there, dense fog advisory. For parts of the Bay Area, this should be the last day we see that. There might be a little dense fog tomorrow morning, but the weather changes as we go into the weekend and the holiday week. The stable environment that brought the fog, the spare of the air days, that goes out the door. The storm door gets kicked open on Saturday, kind of in the morning. Weak weather system goes through, but kind of knocks down that ridge. Fog goes away, inversion blows up. And we get ourselves a little bit of wet, then we get a little bit more wet on Monday, and then that door opens real wide. And we have the potential for uh, some pretty good rainfall right through the holiday week. So you're going to hear a little bit of everything. You're going to hear about ARs and this and that. And there are, there are a couple ARs that are going to get tied into this. But you judge for yourself. We're going to get to the um, precipitable water loop, and you can look at it, and, and I, we'll look at it together. It'll be awesome. Okay, so I um, love this camera. As you know, this is... Mount Tamalpais, looking out towards Pacifica. Oops, sketched a little there. You see the boats coming in and out. We're up over 2,000 feet above the inversion. And then you see it. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Montero Mountain off to the right. And then you can, I just noticed this the other day, you can kind of see Sutro Tower right here, right? Isn't that Sutro Tower? I think it is, yeah. It's weird, it looks small, but it's pretty far away when you think about it. Um, this is a shot, this is Mount uh, Shasta over 14,000 feet. We looked at it yesterday, and I was looking at the lenticular clouds, and these are starting to form already. You see these awesome cap clouds, you can call them what you want. Now what's interesting here is, I think these cap clouds are, and I should, I should know this, I'll get corrected by somebody perhaps, but I know how they're formed, right? We all know how they're formed. They get, they, the air comes off the Pacific Ocean, moist, cool, hits the mountain, goes up to 14,000 feet, forms a cloud, and then as the air descends the other side of the mountain, it dries out. So you get these, these cap clouds or lenticular clouds left over. And Mount Shasta, because of the way it sits out by itself in the, this big plateau, this big plain, catches a lot of that activity. So you get these really clean lenticulars. I suspect these lenticulars here, see how they're kind of out front? I think they're coming off the coastal range. So you got, you got a storm coming in Saturday or a weak weather system, but up here it'll be a little stronger. But it comes in off the ocean, the air, upper level winds, mid-level winds, hits the coastal range and part of the Trinity Alps and those higher hills, mountains, hits it and does the same thing. And then once it comes down, this is my favorite part about these things. So in, let's just use this. This is Mount Shasta. The air goes up, it cools, right? But then once it comes down, it rebounds again and comes up. And glider pilots will tell you this. So it comes up and does the same thing. So I suspect what we're seeing here is some sink. It bounces off. This is off the coastal range. Comes up, comes down, and it goes back up. So as the day wears on, the cap clouds will move closer to Mount Shasta. And the, but it's undulate. It, the winds undulate. And glider pilots love this because they'll catch these waves and they'll ride these waves across country. So it's really, it's really beautiful. I think it's one of the most beautiful things in weather are the um, kind of the sine curves that get created by the um, by the, the the jet stream in in its bounce. Okay, so let's look at this together. I'm gonna see if I can enlarge this a little bit. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so here is I put a loop around uh, Bay Area. Here is the precipitable water, basically water vapor loop. It's, it, just picture that blue line as a bunch of water, not just in a level line in the mid-atmosphere, but in a vertical development. So from the surface, essentially, to 10,000, 15, 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet, it's just moisture which is not typical for our extra tropical storms. Usually are colder storms, so they don't hold as much water. So the level, the, um, the, the amount of moisture in that air column, because that's how you look at the air, is kind of limited. But when you get an atmospheric river, these blue lines, you get moisture uh, content kind of very down from very low near the surface all the way up into the, into the jet stream. And that's what these represent. So as we look, we'll go through here. Here comes the first kind of slight AR. That's Saturday morning, a little bit of rain, but then breaks off. See that break? And then here comes a little more AR, kind of potential. Then again, this model, you know, it'll update again, but this is the basic idea. The main thing I'm picking up is the zonal flow, the blue line pushing straight across the Pacific. So here we are in a Monday morning's potential, right? And then you see another AR 
but see how it broke off. So it's yeah, is it an AR? Well, it's got elements of an AR, but it's not. I wouldn't call that an AR, but it, it started with one. And then this is Tuesday. Looks kind of dry. And then here comes here comes what we've been kind of talking about. And that actually, well, that's interesting. The models have changed that a little. Look, because we're all the way to the twenty fifth now. I haven't looked at this yet. Sorry. Um, so it shows, see how it kind of crips down and breaks off. So that would be encouraging, but then you, then that looks more aggressive, especially for Northern California. And again, that's that fire hose, right? And you can see, wow. So that's December 26th, 7th, 8th. Okay. Wow. A lot of moisture available. That's, again, I don't know if this is going to happen. We'll have to check it again. We'll check it again tomorrow or the next day. Um, so I don't know how, 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 how accurate that's going to be. In other words, is that much moisture going to hang around? We'll see. Here is the water vapor loop or um, amount of moisture in the atmosphere. This is actually not a model. That was a model that was projecting the future. And this is just showing you, hey, there's a ton of moisture out there. And there's a ton of activity representing aggressive uh, swells in the ocean. Swells coming up. It's not that big today, but it's big and it's going to get bigger. And next week's going to be all time big, not in terms of giant, but but it's going to be big. It's going to be 10, 15, 20 foot, kind of like five days, four days in a row, which is not, not typical for us. So let's look at the model here. I'll move this down a little bit. Um, and I have to move this up. Sorry about that. And can I loop around here? I'll put something around us. And then this is the um, GFS. And this is for rainfall. It shows winds too. Those, those stacked lines, the, the corduroy. The, lot, the black lines, that represents when they're close together, it's breezy. When they're far apart, it's not breezy. It's simple. Um, so you see, them kind of, you see when a storm comes because you can see them, see how close together they are. That's because there's pressure gradient. The low is interacting with the high that is to the east. So here comes this. This is, uh, gonna, let's see, Saturday morning. This is that first wave that goes through. And then nothing, nothing, nothing. So Monday kind of, hmm. So you kind of see what we're in for here. And then here comes more of kind of that atmospheric river. And this mimics what we were looking at. So but the thing to note that I would take away from this is don't buy any timing that people are handing you. In other words, it's going to be here at this time and it's going to rain this much. Don't even play that game. And in a pattern like this, I'm playing, I would be 36 hours out at the most in terms of trusting the models. I mean, the models will get the jet stream right in, in, in terms of positioning, which is very important, but atmospheric rivers are so narrow, right? And this one especially looks like it really pinches down to maybe, I don't know, 30 mile wide, 40 mile wide, you know, water hose. So remember, remember San Jose and remember Marin County a couple of weeks ago, we had over a foot of rain in Marin County and San Jose got quarter inch, foot of rain, quarter inch, in 60, 50, 60 miles. Okay, there's Ocean Beach. You can tell it's big because the lip goes over and you can count. So that's pretty good size. I'm actually, I'm up early this morning because I'm going out, uh, Bill's home from Hawaii. We're actually going down to Santa Cruz. Cause like Santa Cruz, you can manage on a day like this. Um, this is Steamers Lane and the, the tides are a little high, but the tides are moderating. So in the next few hours, you know, somewhere in the early afternoon, it'll be pretty fun and it'll get bigger when the tide drops. It'll hit the bottom more so the wave jacks up a little bit more. All right, we're cooking today, buddy. All right, this is uh, Heavenly Valley, just because we can. Awesome. These are the high cirrus clouds moving ahead of that weather system. Those, those weather systems we've been watching, this is an indicator. When you see high cirrus, you go, oh, something's out there because that, something had to put those clouds way up in the atmosphere that are traveling quickly ahead of the storm. They travel way ahead of the front, right? Because there's no friction up there. Okay, it's awesome. We are cooking. And then this is the dense fog advisory. This is this morning. By the time you get to this, it'll probably be not a thing. Uh, but there you go. So let's see what we've got here. I don't know if I can click this. I thought, okay, let's try this. Nope, not happening. Oh, yeah, I can click back. So we're looking at lenticular formation. Ooh, that's fun. Look at that. Awesome. I love how they stack up. Isn't that awesome? Now Shasta, seriously, you can see why it's so spiritual. I'm going backwards in time. This is at uh, 7.53 this morning. So you see, and you can see the clouds. I'm going backwards. So this is not development. This is development or <laughs> undevelopment. All right. Man, you see slowing down. Okay. So anyway, we've got an awesome weekend ahead. Be safe. Uh, holiday looks, you saw, you saw it. You know exactly what. And so when somebody tells you, hey, it's going to rain here. And then, 
Nobody knows, man. Now, at some point, models will get better, data collection will get better, and you'll be able to nail these things. But right now, we're not in a position to say how much rain we're going to get because in the matter of five miles, you could see huge differences. All right, thanks for hanging. It's kind of early, but I am, I'm out. I'll am out. i try to be in tomorrow just real quick because I think the pattern warrants it because it's interesting enough, interesting enough. Let me know what you need. Um, if, I'm not if I'm showing the models not long enough or too long, um, let me know. I'm trying not to be uh, bore you with science, even though science is awesome, but also you just kind of want to drink your coffee and, and, and figure out what your day is going to look like. Get on it today, though, because after that, you know, I think you're going to be able to do stuff Saturday and Sunday. You know what I mean? Outside biking, whatever. But it's going to be drippy. Today is kind of the only day we have for a while that's going to be, you know, free of potential precipitation. All right. See you back here.